Hi guys, welcome to Classic Rock and Country Music Facts and Trivia. Thank you for being here. Um, today's video is on 10 classic artists who changed Las Vegas forever. We're going to start with the rock and roll band Kiss. Kiss oversized boots have left a firm footprint in Las Vegas. Legendary face painted act played a 2014 residency at the Hard Rock Hotel which was later released on DVD and Blu-ray as Kiss Rocks Vegas. Still, the always entrepreneurial group uh, has impacted Sin City even more with its business investments. The Rio Hotel and Casino is home to Kiss World Mini Golf, popular indoor glow-in-the-dark miniature golf course that celebrates the music and history of the band. Space also features a wide range of Kiss-themed memorabilia and arcade games, Still, the most enticing feature is the adjoining Kiss World Museum, boasting rare and eye-catching items throughout the band's colorful career. The Grateful Dead. Grateful Dead's first visit to Vegas was in 69. The band then, at the height of its psychedelic powers, delivered a captivating set that remains highly regarded among bootleggers. Still, the Grateful Dead really left their mark on Vegas the next time they came through the town in 91. The band played two sold-out shows, at Sand Boyd Stadium with 32,000 people in attendance each night. When we did the first Dead show, there really wasn't a philosophy of touring shows being able to bring tours to town. Uh, Pat Christensen, uh, the stadium's former facility director, recalled to the Las Vegas Sun. And after we did that first show, we had the picture of a sold-out stadium, which we showed to Paul McCartney's people. And from there, all the stadium shows started coming through Vegas. McCartney, U2, The Eagles, Metallica, Lollapalooza, uh, George Strait. Uh, the Dead opened everyone's eyes to Vegas' uh, ability to do the biggest touring shows. The Beatles, even a town as wild as Las Vegas, was unprepared for the chaos of Beatlemania. The Fab, Fab Four made Las Vegas the second stop on their 1964 U.S. tour. When the band's plane landed just after 1 a.m., roughly 2,000 fans defied the city's curfew to get a glimpse of the Rockers. Vegas had a curfew. Uh, the Beatles played two shows at the Las Vegas Convention Center on August 20th. The room's capacity was 7,500 people, but it was estimated that more than 8,000 fans attended each show. Local police were so fearful of the throngs of teenagers <clears throat> looking for the band that the Beatles were sequestered in their hotel rooms for most of the day. Um, the band later left a different mark on Vegas when Circus uh, de Soleil's Love opened on the Mirage Resort in 2006. The wondrous show centered around the Beatles' music history and became hugely popular and set a new standard for rock team productions. Elton John. On September 15, 1971, Elton John turned heads during the first concert in Vegas when he sold out a crowd of over 7,000 packed the convention center to see him perform. Decades later, he made Las Vegas his temporary home thanks to two wildly successful residencies. February 13, 2004, the Rocket Man launched his Red Piano residency at the Coliseum of Caesar's Palace. The stay was originally supposed to last for 75 shows, but the residency was so popular that John ended up playing 247 gigs in total from 04 to 09, generating an astonishing $170 million in review revenue. The legendary musician returned to the same venue in 2011 and launched a second residency, The Gold Piano, again at Triumph, lasting 190 shows and bringing in another $140 million. Wayne Newton. Vegas' musical history certainly cannot be written without Mr. Las Vegas, Wayne Newton. The singer made his Vegas debut in the 1950s when he was just a teenager playing the Flamingo Casino and Hotel with his brother six nights a week. Newton's star took off from there as he ascended to headlining status at some of the city's most legendary venues. In a career spanning more than 60 years, Newton has been a Las Vegas mainstay. U2. Uh, on April 12, 1987, U2 performed to a massive crowd at the Thomas and Mack Center in Las Vegas, but uh, it's what happened after the show that left a bigger, bigger impact. Uh, the Irish Rockers were riding high on the success of their new album, uh, the Joshua Tree and record executives begged them to film a music video for their next single, I Still Haven't Found What I'm Looking For. They decided to do so in Las Vegas after their concert. Bono and company were whisked from the venue to Fremont Street in the downtown uh, district via laundry van so as not to draw the attention of fans. Once on site, U2 proceeded uh, to roam the glistening street, lip syncing to their tune uh, for the memorable video. Liberace 
many of the greatest musicians in history can boast at Vegas, uh, Las Vegas residency on their resume, but only one artist can say he was first. Singer and pianist Liberace debuted in Vegas in 1944 and became the first performer to establish a Las Vegas residency. His flamboyant style, outlandish outfits, and oversized stage presence uh, were unmatched by any other artist at the time. For decades, Liberace was one of the Vegas' must-see acts, the human embodiment of the city's colorful lights and unbridled energy. Prince. Several of the artists on this list, Liberace and Wayne Newton among them, helped establish the Vegas residency as a thriving model for musicians and fans alike. However, as Vegas grew and evolved over the years, so too did the public perception of Vegas residencies. Much of the glamour disappeared. Sure, bands would still play a show or two as part of a tour, but an extended residency? That was seemingly for past their prime acts, uh, desperately seeking to make more money. Then in 2006, one man changed everything. Prince. Legendary musician launched a club, 3121, named after his 31st album, released that same year, inside the Rio Hotel and Casino, just off the famed Las Vegas Strip. <clears throat> uh, Frank Sinatra. What Prince was to modern era of Vegas, Sinatra was to the classic. In many ways, it was the chairman of the board who first put Vegas on the map as a musical destination. Interestingly, his initial performance came more out of necessity than anything else. His career was in the downturn in 51, and the mob-owned casinos were some of the few places he could land a well-paid gig. Old Blue Eyes' career bounced back in 52, <clears throat> thanks in part to his Oscar-winning turn in From Here to Eternity, and Las Vegas came along for the ride. Sinatra was a draw for tourists, and his popularity buoyed uh, the entire city. Suddenly, in this two-horse town, Sinatra meant excitement. Excitement meant crowds. Crowds meant gambling. And gambling meant money for the casinos, especially the ones where Frank was playing, author James Kaplan wrote in the biography, Frank the Voice. And, of course, last but not least, last but certainly not least, Elvis Presley. No artist whose history is intertwined with Las Vegas is Elvis Presley. The famed singer made his debut in Vegas on April 23rd of 56. By all accounts, it did not go well. But he enjoyed his time in Vegas so much he swore he'd return, and he did many, many times. Whether it was a 1963 movie, Viva Las Vegas, and the hit song of the same name, his marriage to Priscilla on May 1st of 67, or his many performances over the years, the king was palpable uh, part of the city's mystique. But Presley's most memorable Vegas stay began on July 31st of 69 at the International Hotel, thrust back into the spotlight thanks to his usually successful comeback special. Elvis agreed to capitalize on the momentum with a Vegas residency. His obligation continued to be renewed due largely to the dealings of his manager, Colonel Tom Parker. Elvis soon had his own massive suite atop the International Hotel, a sprawling 5,000 square foot home away from home, for seven years spanning 636 sold out concerts. Elvis owned the Las Vegas music scene. Sadly, his physical and mental health began to deteriorate towards the end of the run, and he died on August 16th. 1977. <clears throat> and also, sadly, is how much Colonel Tom Parker ripped him off big time. Uh, just, it, it was a sad situation. If you want to watch a good movie and to tell, and you like Elvis or love Elvis, the movie Elvis, uh, it was uh, uh, okayed by uh, Elvis Presley uh, Corporation and, and by Priscilla and also Lisa Marie, and man, what a movie. And the guy who plays him, just awesome job, really great. Tom Hanks plays Colonel Tom Parker, a real piece of work. Anyway, that's all I got for you here. I want to let you know that I don't know what's going to happen with this uh, channel, but we're down to double digits on viewers daily, and I can't keep going with that. So I'm going to have to refurbish and figure out what I'm going to do with this channel. So I, I will let you know. It's not going anywhere, but it'll be something different. And I will take uh, your comments, your suggestions in the comment section. I would appreciate that. It would be a lot of help. And if you'd share these out for the time being, I'd appreciate it and let people know what is going on here. Um, all I got for you, you guys have a great day. God bless. And I'm praying for you.